Court will note that this matter is before the court for an evidentiary hearing on the defendant's motion to change custody and parenting time. Are you ready to proceed, Mr. Schaefer? I am, Your Honor. Ms. Reed, are you ready? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Mr. Schaefer, do you wish to make an opening statement or proceed to proofs? I, I wish to make an opening statement, Your Honor. Okay, go ahead. Okay, thank Your you. Honor, this is a matter where the uh, parties have joint legal and physical custody of the minor child Gianna, who is 14 years old. Uh, we have filed this petition uh, alleging and with our belief that the environment at the father's home is detrimental to the child's well-being and emotion. Uh, <clears throat> this situation has been brought to the attention of my client by the child and by third parties uh, who have contacted her uh, in relation to what is going on. The proofs will show, for whatever reason, uh, the plaintiff father has set into effect in his home, which I call a strange situation where uh, Gianna is required to do certain things on a monopoly money process where she gains money and she gets uh, uh, docked things that shouldn't be a punishment in the home, such as uh, electricity, water, room, food. Uh, and as a result of this, uh, she is suffering emotionally, which has lopped over into her uh, school work and her athletics. The proofs will show that Gianna has been a straight A student all of her life. Uh, it will also show that she has prowess in the athletics and she uh, plays on the basketball team and the volleyball team and does well and has great commitment for both of those activities, the academics and the sports. The uh, proofs are going to show that uh, the uh, environment in the home of her father is such that it is put her in an emotional state that she has dropped in grades somewhat uh, recently due to this uh, environment in the home. Uh, she has not been able to uh, complete all of her athletic camps and extracurricular activities in that regard because of whatever policies are in that home. Uh, the child is of sufficient age uh, that she should not be uh, having to deal with that problem when she's doing well in school and doing well in athletics. Uh, the proofs are going to show that my client uh, is, has tried to address these issues with uh, her father uh, to no avail. Uh, we are trying to uh, get relief for Gianna so that she can continue to excel. Gianna does not dislike her father. Uh, I think she. Uh, the proofs are going to show that she uh, loves her father, but does not uh, think and we do not believe that the current environment is in her best interest. Uh, the proofs are going to show that currently they have joint legal custody and it is a few days on, few days off and it goes two, three and it will be explained to everyone what the circumstance is. Uh, the child's position and my client's position is that in the best interest of the child that the physical custody be changed to uh, the mother, uh, that uh, the father have uh, standard parenting time, uh, which should alleviate all of these rules and regulations and the taking of electricity, taking of rooms, taking of water from the uh, child uh, during the week time. And that is going to be our request, Your Honor. Uh, we submit the proofs are going to uh, involve accusations that my client has instigated this. Uh, we'll, there'll be proofs indicating that there have been other observations from third parties that uh, have been reported to her and uh, that the child has reported to her these events and that there needs to be a change in what is going on. Uh, thus, Your Honor, uh, we're going to be asking at the end of the proofs that the the child be in the physical custody of the mother and uh, that there be standard parenting time for the father. Thank you. Thank you.
Ms. Reed, do you wish to make an opening statement, or reserve your opening statement, or waive your opening statement? A brief opening statement, Your Honor. Yeah. Um, it is our position that the proofs are going to show that Gianna and all the children in the home, which there are two, it's Gianna and Baron, and they're both 14, are required to do typical household chores. And there is a system in place where the children receive an allowance for doing their chores. And there are normal consequences in place for failing to do those chores, which is, it's not, she's not allowed to have water or room or electricity or food as alleged in the motion. And my client will testify about that. And April, his wife who also lives in the home will testify about that. There is a system in place to teach the children responsibility and how to budget with that is tied to their chores. They do the chores, they get a pay stub that is created by the parties that teaches the children, this is how you read a pay stub, this is how taxes work, this is what social security is. So they know how to read that once they decide to get a summer job, which is coming up because they're both 14. And part of that pay system is they get bills. So they know how to read bills and they know how to budget a crowd. Now this system doesn't say if you don't pay or if you don't pay your bills, you don't get to use the shower, you don't get to use any water, you don't get to do this. Other things are taken away. It's if you don't clean the bathroom and you don't pay, you know, your bill, you don't get to use the big bathroom. And there are three other bath or two other bathrooms available though for the children to use. They don't just get to use the largest one that's most convenient in the location to their bedroom. And it's not that if they don't pay their bills, they're deprived of food. That is not what this is. One of the examples is if they don't do their chores. They don't pay their, a quote, electric bill. That means they don't get to use their cell phone or they don't get to use Netflix. It's not that we're shutting off electricity to the entire home or she's not allowed to use any facilities or she's not allowed to shower or she's not allowed to do her homework or she's not allowed to go to practices. That is not what's happening. These are typical consequences for not doing required household chores, which none of these chores are going to be extraordinary. And this is a custody grab of the defendant does not want to work with the plaintiff regarding the best interest of the child. So it's her position that the best thing to do is to take the child away, which is not in her best interest. I believe both of these parents love their daughter, wants what's best for her. There's a severe issue in communication and co-parenting. And the solution is not to drastically change custody and to try and cut my client out of this child's life. So we're requesting that the motion be denied. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Schaefer, uh, call your first witness. I call uh, Leanne Hegman. And how old is Gianna? 14. And uh, currently, you and uh, Mr. Hegman have uh, joint legal and physical custody of this child. Is that correct? Yes. Would you uh, briefly state to the judge the uh, parenting time that each of you have on a two week basis? Um, well, it's. Uh kind of hard to be brief. It's it's a difficult schedule. It's two days. It's usually like two days on. I have her every single Sunday night. Um, he has her every Tuesday night consistently. Um, on my the weekends that I have her, we alternate weekends. On the weekends that I have her, I would have her Friday after school, all day Saturday, all day Sunday, take her to school on Monday. And then she would go back to dad's house to Monday night, Tuesday night. Then she'd be back with me Wednesday night, Thursday night, Back with dad Friday, Friday night, Saturday, and Sunday until five. And then I get her at five. And then the following week goes that she's with me Sunday night um, and Monday night. And then she's with her father from Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night. And then I would get her back Friday at five. And then the schedule would repeat. Good. And uh, did it come to your attention there was some difficulty that Gianna was having in relation to the environment in her dad's home? Yes. And from what sources did you receive such information? Um, it was from uh, one of her friend's mothers um, that Gianna had gone to school and um, talked to at lunch about what was going on over there. And she went home and crying to her mom about what was going on over there. She felt bad. So Jonelle called me right before a volleyball game um, on September 20th. Um, she called me crying and told me that I Objection hearsay. Okay. Uh, don't tell us what she said, but you received information there was difficulty from a friend. Is that correct? Yes. And uh, as a result of that information, did you address those concerns with your daughter? Yes, I did. And, uh, and did she confirm those problems? Yes, she did. And as a result, you filed this action. Is that correct? 
yes, I came to see you the next morning. Okay. And uh, have you made an effort to talk to Gianna's father about the concerns that were expressed to you? I have tried to talk to him about many things and he just shuts me out or he barks. I mean, there's a total disconnect. I can't talk to him about anything. There's, there's okay. no. So the two of you have difficulty talking to each other about parenting issues. Is that uh, a fair oh, statement? Absolutely. Okay. And, um, uh, I'm going to object, Your Honor, that the answer to the question was not answered. The question was, had Ms. Hagman contacted my client regarding the concerns and issues that were brought to her? Oh, that that no. would not be a, an objection for that. My objection. Yeah, she if answered that. He asked another question. Maybe you missed it, Ms. Reed. Well, you're, I don't have it written down, Mr. Schaefer. What was your next question? Well, I, I guess I'm not, uh, I asked her whether or not she made an effort to talk to uh, the father about the problems that were expressed to her. And then she said yes, and she went on to explain what she had done. Okay. Go ahead and ask your question, Mr. Schaefer. Okay. Um, have you seen uh, an outward reaction from your daughter as a result of these problems that you have received from other sources and your daughter? Yes. What have you observed in relation to your daughter? I have observed that she's, um, she's very timid. Um, she does not stick up for herself at all. She's, um, I have noticed that she is, her grades have been slipping. She's been struggling, um, trying to keep up there and she's been coming home talking about how stressed she is about some grades. Objection. She's, been she's cried. Uh, Ms. Hagman, not, you can not testify as to what somebody else testifies, states. Okay. Okay. Um, your, your Honor, uh, I'm, I'm not asking for what was said. I'm asking for the outward expression. You may ask that, but she's think answering that. it in a different way. I'm telling her she can't answer okay. it and state what somebody else says. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, she's she's been upset. She's been stressed. Um, okay. Just, and uh, what kind of a student has uh, your daughter been for years? Um, she's been a straight four-point student. She's very serious about her schoolwork. And, and what sort of courses is she taking? Um, she's, well, standard, mostly standard um, classes. Well, she's actually in ninth grade taking mostly 10th grade classes, and um, she's got an AP English class. Okay. And uh, is your daughter involved in sports? Yes. And what uh, involvement has she had? Um, she's been playing um, uh, volleyball and basketball, and um, but those are just just during the um, school year, the, the normal season, but anything, any of the camps and um, that she's wanted to go to have been kind of hard to um, work out with, with JP. Um, any, uh, like she's been interested in travel volleyball, travel basketball, um, that hasn't been able to work out for her. Um, and outside of that, they, okay. they also- on, all the on your time, okay, on your time, have, have you provided uh, transportation, getting uh, Gianna to her required camps and, and practices? Um, well, all of her practices and all of her camps in the summer, yes. Anything that I'm, I can get her into, yes. Has she missed uh, some of the camps and practices when she's been in the uh, care, custody, control of uh, her father? There's been camps that she's wanted to do that she has not been able to do because he doesn't agree. Um, and there has been, um, they have lifting and conditioning in the summer, and she um, he was not taking her to any of the lifting classes, and I didn't realize that until after it was over. Yeah. Um, why do you think a change in the physical custody would remedy these problems that you're observing with your daughter? Well, um, I'd say, first of all, because I definitely support everything that she wants to do. And I want her to be able to, to, um, complete all those things and have the opportunities while she's able. And I'm also a, um, realtor and I, I purposely went into real estate and doing this job because I can build my schedule around hers. And so I take her everywhere and I don't have to miss anything. She doesn't have to miss anything. Have you been attentive to all of the needs that uh, the child has in school and uh, elsewise? Yes. And uh, are you uh, financially able to provide the proper care, food, clothing, medical services for the child? Yes. And uh, how would you describe your relationship with the child? Uh, we're very close. We're very close. She doesn't tell me a whole lot of things, um, unfortunately. She's afraid of repercussions over there, but... Um, when I ask her directly, she will tell me. Um, we, but uh, okay. very supportive, loving relationship. Okay. 
And uh, has that been an ongoing relationship that you and your daughter have? Oh, yeah. Yes. And have you observed the relationship that she has with her father? Um, you know, we're never really around each other um, at all, other than pick up drop off. So, no, as I have um, more more that, you know, I know that she loves she's loves her dad a lot. Um, she's um, it's I don't I don't I mean, from what she says, it sounds like her and her dad have a decent relationship. Um, he doesn't stick up for her a lot. Um, but other Objection than that, I know that he loves her. Sustained. Uh, where do you live? Albion, southeast side of Albion, 12 minutes from her school. And uh, on your days, do you uh, provide transportation to the school? Yes, I do. Okay. And uh, what is your income uh, at your employment? Um, it's about 72000 a year. It was last year. Okay. It varies year by year. And how long have you uh, been a real? Um, this is your, I'm in my fourth year. And uh, the place that you live, how long have you lived there? Um, eight years. And uh, are you renting or do you own? I own. And uh, who else lives at that residence? It's just me and Gianna. Uh, is, is the child involved in any religion uh, on an organized basis? Um, she recently um, started going to a youth group. Um, she's been interested in that. So we have not gone um, consistently, but we've just talked about she wants to go. So I'm going to start making attempts to take her in mornings. But she goes every Sunday night now to a youth group. Okay. Uh, without telling me, do you believe that the child has a preference as to where she would like to live? Yes. Okay. Uh, are you willing to facilitate the relationship between Gianna and her father? Yes. Have you done so in the past? Yes. Uh, have Have you done anything to alienate the relationship between the child and her father? No. Uh, have you made the child available for other times that the uh, father might want to have contact with the child? Every time, yes. Okay. Even if they weren't in the schedule, you have made the child available? Yes. If there's something going on that they want her for and she wants to go, then yes, she gets to go. Has that been reciprocated to you by uh, her father on times that you want to have uh, time with Gianna? No. If, if it is, it's it's a quite a battle. Tell us about what battles you've had. Well, usually it's a no. Um, it's usually... Um, there's been times where you have just asked for an hour or two hours, you know, extra for family dinners, things like that. And um, I, I come out with blatant no's. Um, there are times that um, I have tried, well, vacations, there's always, um, they they keep track of every day that I take. And then, for example, two years ago, I took her on spring break. Um, she was, I believe she was gone seven or eight. Days. I really don't know. I don't keep track um, because I don't feel like we should. I feel like if there's something going on, she should just be able to go. Um, but uh, apparently they, I owed them five extra days or something that they hadn't taken yet. The problem is they don't, if something comes up and they haven't already taken their five days that they're owed, then they won't let me take her anywhere. They want to use those five days first. But the problem is they don't use the five days. So then in return, she can't go with me. But if, if she does go with me, it is, I mean, there is hell to pay for it. It's um great big, long condescending text messages. Um, it's, it's awful. Most of the time, Gianna would rather not Are ask. You... There's been times she's missed out on family vacations because she doesn't want the, you know, all of the the problems that ensue from that. She doesn't want to go to mom and dad's house. She doesn't want to see us fighting. She, she doesn't want to go to dad's house and have to deal with what, you know, they're, them being upset or um, a lot of times she'll, she'd rather just not go to, to avoid it. Okay. Uh, are you aware of her inability to use uh, her phone when she's been on vacations with her father? Yes. They and, um, oh, took her to Disney her. for nine days and took her phone so that I wouldn't ruin their vacation. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so is she able, to your knowledge, to use the phone that she has uh, when she goes to visit her father? Uh, the phone that I provide her? No, they do not allow that yes. in, her, in their home. Um, they won't allow her phone, that she, her main phone that she uses and prefers to use. They won't let her use that in their home. 
they've gotten her a different cell phone that she claims does not have very good cell service. She will talk to me over Snapchat. Um, but as far as phone calls, I never get to talk to her on the phone when she's over there. And it's not that she doesn't have the ability to do so. It's that they make it very uncomfortable or things get very tense over there or she feels like they're listening in. Objection. Um, Here's oh, the oh, okay. Okay, then. I, I, I'll uh, go on for another subject. During the time in uh, Florida, did you receive any uh, phone calls from your daughter? I received one that probably lasted about 30 seconds. And then he told her she had to get off the phone. Okay, what what time, uh, what date was this or what time of year was this? That was in February of 2022. If, in fact, the judge were to change custody, uh, what parenting time do you think would be in the best interest of the minor child uh, with her father? Standard parenting time. And I've also told her just, just to alleviate all the stress and all the constant fighting, but I've also told her that whenever she would like to go see her dad if there's something going on and she requests to go that I would never tell her no, that she's always able to go. The, so the child will be made available for specific requests from her father if they have something going on. Yes. If the reports of necessities such as room, furniture, electricity, water is being kept from your child, do you believe that's in the best interest of the child? No. No. Do any such rules exist in your home? No. I, typical punishments like taking taking electronics and things like that away, you know, for for a small matter of time. But um, no, that that's I would, if she needed to contact her dad, she would absolutely be able to. Um, but uh, no, it's just standard, um, you know, take electronics away, things that mean the most to a, a fourteen year old. Um, but absolutely not her basic needs. Okay. It, does Jana have access to phones in your home to call her father if she so desires? Yeah, she has her own phone that she can use whenever she wants. Uh, no further questions this time, Your Honor. Okay. Ms. Reed, uh, cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Hagman, has CPS been informed of your allegations? No. I went to the attorney first to, to um, see what he recommended. He said that um, it probably just put her in more, more trouble or more turmoil than it was worth, and he just filed for a quick hearing. Have you been to Mr. Hagman's home? Um, I've never been inside of it. Do you discuss this case with Gianna? Um, yeah, I, I want to know that, you know, what I'm saying is truthful and asking her if everything, anything's been over exaggerated or if she um, is telling the truth. Um, I ask her about those things and then I encourage her, you know, and just um, encourage her in the way of, you know, just knowing that this isn't her fault and that we, we can handle this and that she's strong enough to to get through this. But that's it. Did you tell her that the ex parte motion was denied and that the custody and parenting time schedule had to be in place until this hearing? Yes, I did. She wanted to know that. And did you also tell her when the order was modified last year, the right of refusal was taken away? Uh, I'm not sure if I did or not. Pos it's possible. She was wondering why she can't come to mom's house when they are they are gone or when she needs a babysitter. Have you ever observed Gianna being um, denied the use of shower facilities? No, I don't live there. Okay, so you have no idea if any of the allegations in your motion are true. This is all based on what other people have told Gianna, you. what Gianna's told me. Is Gianna currently in counseling? Um, well, um, I did not know that she was. I did not give consent um, the last time. Um, I wanted to be involved with who she went to. Um, he had just told me oh, one second, he was getting a hold of me. One second, ma'am. She asked if you were aware if she was involved in counseling, and then you went off on okay. the diatribe. Answer the question, please. Yep. Um, I was not aware until um, our previous hearing when you when Jennifer said that um, she was in counseling. That's when I learned she was in counseling. Have you reached out and talked to the counselor? No, because I did not want to consent. I wanted to be a part of of who she went to. So I told him I was not going to consent to that specific person that he picked out by himself. Did Mr. Hagman ask you or let you know that the counselor is going to be reaching out to you? Yes, he did. And I told him I would not consent. Did he explain why or did you explain why you were not going to consent? Um, 
you know, he, he asked about um, talking and getting together, but it wasn't until after we, I had filed a claim. So no, we never, we never did talk about that. He asked me at one point, what was, what the, um, what the problem was, but if I can elaborate, the problem is that the first counselor that he got, um, he signed her up and only had her going on days that she was with him and told the counselor, um, what the counselor told me was that they were implying that mom was the problem and um, kind of steered the, attempted to steer the um, sessions towards mom. So that's why I wanted to be involved this time. So when he told you this time, this year, mm -hmm. that Jackson Healing Clinic was going to be reaching out to you, you said absolutely not. I said, no, I said, we need to work together on this. I believe that's in the text messages that you submitted. Okay. What is the problem with Jackson Healing Clinic just calling you to explain their services? Um, I believe that JP should have talked to me. I think that's a decision that him and I need to um, talk about as her parents together. Um, I think that we could have, I don't have any specific problem with Jackson Healing Clinic. Um, I don't know anything about them. The problem is that JP does not talk to me and let me be involved in these decisions. I just get options thrown at me. Well, the text message says Jackson Healing Clinic will be reaching out to you. Yes. And did they reach out to you? Yes, they left me a voicemail. Did you call them back? No, because I was not going to consent. So what I'm trying to get at is he reached out to you and said, this clinic's going to be reaching out to you. The clinic reached out to you. You did not mm -hmm. call them back. And no, I did not. And at that time. The ask and answer to ready, Your Honor. Well, that, we'll go into it. She can at, further identify. At that time, Gianna was not in counseling, correct? No. So because JP said, or Mr. Hagman said, this clinic's going to be reaching out to you, it was an automatic no. Yes, because three months prior, I had asked him to be involved, that I wanted to, she had been asking about getting in counseling, and I wanted to work together. I specifically told him I wanted to work together on this. This is something that he and I needed to talk about. And he didn't do that. He just reached back out and said that he had never heard from me. So he went ahead and did it on his own. But he never he never reached out to me to let me know that he was even looking. So I felt that that was wrong and it was not a, a sufficient co-parenting. So I did not agree because of that reason. So because he picked this clinic and had them reach mm -hmm. out to you, you're not consenting to anything? I will consent if him and I can talk together and find a counselor together and I can see what he's putting on these forms about why she needs to be in there. I would absolutely consent 100%, but that's what I need to consent. It's for him to work with me first. But you never called the counselor back to put no. your input and registration or anything when they called you? No, I did not. How do you communicate with Mr. Hagman? Um, I'm only allowed text messages only. He has not, since he's been married, he has not been able to talk to me on the phone and will not talk to me in person. Text message only. Do you have any CPS history? No. Do you have any criminal history? Um, I had a um, impaired driving when I was 21. So that was uh, 22 years ago. Okay. In your motion, on paragraph 14, you say the defendant mother has attempted to rectify the situation without informal ability to do so, and the child is suffering. And it has been suggested counseling for the child. However, plaintiff father has not cooperated in this endeavor. Mm -hmm. But the child is in counseling now. Uh, yeah, I learned that she is. And have you reached out to Mr. Hagman to change counselors? Yes, I have, I have reached out to him and asked him why I wasn't involved and that I would not I would not sign this and he would not respond to me in any form. And That's, so that I, wasn't my question. My question was, have you reached out to him since you've been in counseling to change counselors? No, because we've been in this process. I have not reached out to him at all. I figured that it would, it would battle its way out in court. On paragraph 13 of your motion, it says said rules are affecting the child emotionally. And in spite of confrontation with the plaintiff's father. From defendant mother, these rules have not changed and it's causing the situation to need the court's intervention. That is that that was a miscommunication. And no, I did not reach out to him directly um, because of patterns in the past. I, I knew I wouldn't get anywhere. I went straight to the attorney. But you signed this motion. That Did you read this motion before you signed it? Uh, yes, I apparently didn't see that part that it was unclear. Okay, I have no further questions. Okay, Mr. Schaefer, any uh, redirect? Yes. Uh, with joint uh, legal custody, was your understanding that the two of you had to agree to any counseling or medical uh, attention for the child? 
I'm sorry, can you repeat that? I missed that. I thought you were talking to somebody else. With your joint legal custody with the father of Gianna, is it, is it your understanding that the two of you had to agree to any counseling? Yes. And did uh, Mr. Hegeman uh, reach out to you at all prior to the counseling and tell you who he wanted to be a counselor and ask for your consent to that before she was placed in counseling? No, he did not. And how did you learn that, in fact, she was in counseling? When Jennifer um, stated that on our first evidentiary hearing, that she was in That's counseling. That's the first time you learned of it? Yes. That's the first time you learned of it? Yes. Uh, Mr. Hageman never advised you that she was in counseling or who the counselor was? No, he only said that um, the Jackson Healing Clinic was going to be out. He said that um, it was because he had never heard from me that he reached out on his own um, without attempting to get in touch with me um, and that the Jackson Healing Clinic would be contacting me. Okay. Are you aware of other third parties reaching out to Mr. Hegeman in relation to uh, your concerns of what's going on in his home? I know that his mother has and his sister has. Are you aware of any positive feedback from those uh, contacts? Not, no, not at all. No further questions, Your Honor. Ms. Reed, any uh, recross? Yes, Your Honor. Regarding counseling, did you ever reach out to Mr. Hagman with other options or to try to set up counseling? That was my initial, my initial text when I first said, I would like to work with you on this. And I think this is something that you and I together need to work on and that we need to find a counselor together. And I think I said something like, just as the court, just as the court demands, something like that. But um, yes, I wanted to, I attempted to work with him together to to find counseling for her. And he never responded and never got back with me again until he said Jackson Healing Clinic would be following me. Did you ever, so you did not provide options or let's talk about this clinic or this counselor? No, neither did he. I um I don't feel like I, I have in a, in a position to give him options. I feel like him and I together come up with the options. So you sent an initial text message and then there was nothing. He sent a message saying one clinic's going to be reaching out to you. And then it was a, a refusal. I'm not talking to that clinic. And then nothing else. You didn't say, let's try this place. Let's talk about this place. There were no other proposals. No, I said, I told you before that I wanted to work on, on this with you together. We needed to pick somebody together. So no, I'm, I'm not going to consent to that. And that was but three my, months later after I had first asked him. But my question is, you're, you're, you're saying you want to work together and work something out together. What yes. efforts did you make to then again reach out and say, we need to get together and do this? I had already told him the ball was in his court to get back with me at that point because I had already brought it up and he just did not respond ever. No further questions. Okay, thank you. Next witness, Mr. Schaefer. Uh, can I have one follow-up on that last? Uh... Okay, go ahead. Conversation. Uh, do you have difficulty talking to Mr. Hageman uh, about the child? Yes, I'm. I'm either completely ignored, or I usually what it turns into is um, he he believes that it's just because I don't like his wife, and it, it the concerns that I have about Gianna are never given any attention. It just immediately turns into I'm only doing this because I don't like April. So yeah, it's okay. uh, and it ends up a huge fight and um, just some really nasty derogatory messages and very condescending over text message and we get nowhere and then he just stops responding okay uh no further questions miss reed any follow-up no your honor okay thank you next witness uh, mr schaefer i would call for cross-examination mr hegman uh, mr hegman you are the uh, uh father of gianna is that correct yes it is and uh you heard uh <laughs> the rendition of what the parenting time is at the present time. Do you agree with that rendition? Yes, I do. Okay. And um, Gianna is in your home periodically and you, you are aware of the allegations in the petition. You've read our petition, correct? And you filed an answer to it. Yes, I have read your petition and I have filed my answers to that. All right. And uh, in that uh, answer, you had admitted that sometime in your, uh, the time that you have Gianna with you, that you have uh, taken away the light bulbs in her home, uh, in her room. Is that correct? Uh, yes. In response to Gianna not doing her chores, which she has been well aware that she was 
required to do basic chores. Uh, you know, we're talking about loading and unloading the dishwasher. We're not talking about hand washing dishes, helping clean up after dinner, helping prepare a dinner a couple times a week, typically about once a week, um, doing her own laundry on a regular basis. Um, just basic household chores that I think any child should know how to do when they go on their own. So I'm trying to teach Gianna responsibilities. Okay. And in that response, was, there had been a okay. time that Gianna was not completing the chores. And I gave her a quite a few warnings. And then it came to a head. And yes, I removed the light bulbs from her room. There were still other light sources in the room. She has LED strips that go all the way around them. I believe there's a lamp in there that she had access to as well. Um, but it was to drive home the fact that, hey, you need to come talk to me about what's going on because you are not completing your end of the bargain that we've talked about. Okay. Did you, did you not realize uh, that uh, that emotionally affected her in, and her ability to do her academic work? There was no effect to do her academic work. She has an iPad. She had full access to that. And I also had suggested that she come do her homework at the kitchen table or at the living room couch or wherever she felt comfortable in my home to do her homework. Uh, it was her choice. And I'm assuming it was because of stubbornness and 14 year old child um, being reprimanded for something that she knew was wrong. Um, she decided to stay in her room and um, yeah, that's what happened. Okay. And when was this, what was the date of this? Uh, so it was the Tuesday before your client, Leanne filed the motion. And um, how long were the uh, light bulbs taken from her room? She had practice that day. So it was from after school practice. I'm going to say it's probably, I think we got home about 515 that day. Um, until the next day after she had gone to school and practice. And then we sat down again, had another family talk about, hey, these are the responsibilities. These are the consequences that could happen. Um, you know, you guys got to stay on the wall and make sure that you're holding up your end of the bargain. And then all of the electronics were yeah. um, given back. Uh, the light bulbs were put back in the room. Um, it, it was literally... I said from five o'clock until probably 10 when they went to bed one night. So you're talking four hours there. And then when they got home at five o'clock. So in essence, it was probably about a four hour period. Uh, you have uh, also uh, disciplined her, have you not, by uh, threatening to evict her from her room? Is that correct? Uh, yeah. In the same incidents, I also put a note on the door. Um, when we enacted the program, we told the kids that to facilitate a learning and responsibility and everything that their rooms would quote unquote become their own apartments in which they have televisions and computers and lights and lots of things that you would have in an apartment. And we're trying to teach learning lessons for, you know, when they get older in life as, you know, 18 is right around the corner. And I'm assuming Gianna's going to want to go to college and she's going to need to know how to pay bills, how to handle an apartment, how to do these things. So yes, there was a note on the door and it was dated I think a week or two after the date, I want to say it was sometime in October. I believe this motion was filed in September. I'm not exactly for sure on those dates, but it was meant to, you know, come talk to me. We have some issues. You know, these are, you know, it was all involved in this learning lesson of trying to teach responsibility to um, a teenager. Have you uh, threatened to uh, remove her furniture from her room uh, as a result of a uh, of, of punishment or a result of getting her to do what you wanted her to do? There was no threat to remove furniture from her room. There was a statement I made that said, if you had rented furniture from a rent-a-center type of place, which a lot of people starting out in life have to do, I said that they would be able to come and confiscate your furniture if you didn't pay your bills. But there was no threat and to remove Gianna's furniture from her room. Has she been restricted on the use of what shower she can use based on her not doing what you want her to do? She has never been restricted to um, not take a shower. She's always had showers available to her. In my home, there are three bathrooms. One of them is in the master bedroom that we typically don't let the kids use. Then there's one in the hallway, and then there's one off the kitchen. Gianna has always had full access to shower, toilet, and sink and bathroom facilities anytime that she's in my home. Yeah, my question was, she was restricted as to what showers she could use based on disciplinary action on your part correct yes she was asked to use a different shower yeah and which one uh is she was she restricted that she could not use um she was asked to use a shower that was off of the kitchen and that's a much smaller area is it not than the other ones 
Uh, the, the facility still has a, you know, full shower, full toilet, full sink. It's a full bath, uh, square footage wise. Uh, yes, it would be smaller, but it has all of the functionalities of a bathroom. Has she been restricted as to what foods are available to her based on your, uh, rules in your home? No, there's never been restrictions onto food that she could have. Um, the only thing that we do enact, uh, we in my home, typically try to stay away from red dyes, uh, dyes, all foods, synthetic dyes in general, but specifically red 40. Um, so other than trying to limit the amount of red 40 that she ingests and also the amount of sugar that she ingests, um, there's been no restrictions. Obviously, I think Gianna has a pretty good sweet tooth. And I mean, if she were allowed to have chocolate cake every day for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, I'm sure that would be her choice as opposed to a nutritious meal. Have you, uh, accommodated Gianna and all of the camps and sporting requirements that she has? Yes. Any camp or sporting uh, event or, uh, you know, especially during in season in school, she's never missed a practice. She's never missed a game. Um, there have been some lifting and uh, let me say this optional lifting and conditioning events that happened. Uh, I believe the time was from 9 a.m. until 1030 in the morning. Um, we live about the same distance away. Uh, as Leanne does, I think it takes about 15 minutes maybe to get to the school. So that creates a 30 minute round trip. And when a student, when Gianna is only going to be lifting for, you know, an hour, that's a lot to ask a parent who has a job that is not as flexible as in a realtor to take that time out of their schedule to get her back and forth. Um, I also let Gianna know to reach out to some of her friends. And I reached out to um, a friend of her parents, a friend of ours. Um, to make sure that she could go to some of these events that, you know, me or my wife were not able to take her to. Uh, but like I said, they were optional summer conditioning events. I think they happened in June, July, and then that was it. And uh, did you reach out to uh, Leanne and see if she could take the child to these uh, events? No, I have not. And specifically for, uh, I've reached out and tried to uh, include Leanne on things in the past. Uh, I know you were her attorney at our previous motion, and she had used some time um, that I was paying her to be a babysitter to try to say that I was giving up my parenting time. So since then, I have took it upon myself to provide and, you know, support for Gianna. And when she's in my home, I take care of the things. I don't think it's on okay, so to you. Uh, when I asked my question, you did not reach out to Leanne to provide the transportation at times that you felt you could not uh, provide that. Yeah, I don't feel that I should have to uh, ask her to uh, give rise to Gianna when I'm able to provide those myself. But, but you or were unable I'm not to, able to provide those myself. Or if I'm not able to provide those myself, um, I don't think that it, it, for an optional practice, I don't think that that would warrant uh, reaching out to Leanne about making sure Gianna could get to a optional practice. Did you consult with Leanne in relation to uh, counseling that you had placed Gianna in? I informed Leanne that the Jackson Healing Clinic would be reaching out to her. And in that text message exchange, um, she accused me of, I, I will say, impropriety, uh, that I had put Gianna in this counseling without reaching out to her and she wanted to work together. But when I gave her the option to work together, in Jackson Healing Clinic so she could talk to them and ask them questions that she wanted to ask them and then consult with me. Uh, apparently, through her testimony, she chose not to respond to them. So I... I, I, I guess my question I, was, before you... in uh, Just a second. Before you engaged the child in counseling, put her in counseling, did you get the consent of Leanne to do so? I did not have the consent from Leanne to do so. The Jackson Healing Clinic said they would reach out to her. They didn't. I had a conversation with the owner of the Jackson Healing Clinic and, you know, let the owner know of, you know, the 50% uh, legal and 50% physical custody that we have. And it was relayed to me that if... Okay, don't tell us what uh, somebody else told you. Uh, okay. But you did not have a consent and you did engage her in counseling. Is that correct? Uh, yes, yeah, she is in counseling at the Jackson Healing Clinic. And okay, uh, thank you. Leanne was aware uh, of when, And when did you put her in uh, counseling? Sorry. Excuse me, when? What was that? Can you repeat the question, sir? Okay, I can. Uh, what was the date that you engaged Gianna or enrolled her in the counseling that you have her in? Uh, it would have been the Monday um, after I 
let Leanne know that the healing clinic would be reaching out to her. I don't have the, I can look on my phone if you would like me to for a specific date, but it was the Monday following that. Well, can you give us a month, a general time? Uh, can I look at my phone? Sure, go ahead. Refresh your memory. Um, August 25th of this year uh, at 1045 in the morning, I let her know that the healing clinic would be reaching out to her. So it would have been. No, my um, question was, when did you enroll the that, child in counseling? I, the client, her first counseling was one week after I let Leanne know that the healing clinic would be reaching out to her. So September 1? Uh, yes, on or about that. I believe it was the, the whatever Monday is. I don't know. I don't have a calendar in front of me. Her counseling with the Jackson and, uh, Clinics are 6 p.m. on Mondays. And how many, excuse me, how many counseling sessions has Gianna had uh, with this uh, counselor? Mm, I, I believe four. She goes every other Monday at six. Well, it's a, it's a Zoom uh, online counseling because that's what works with her basketball schedule and volleyball schedule. And uh, at no time before September 1 or since, have you advised Leanne that the child was in counseling, correct? Yeah, like I said, I told her the counselor would be reaching out to her. Um, and I figured that would be enough due diligence. And she could talk to them directly instead of me relaying what they said. And she could ask her questions to them. Were you, uh, uh, have you talked to your mother about your rules in your home concerning Deanna? Uh, no, I have not personally talked with my mother uh, about this. There have been some text message exchanges. And uh, your mother has uh, expressed to you, has she not, that that in her professional and familial uh, relationship that this is inappropriate for the daughter? I'm going to object, Your Honor, if we're having professional and personal opinions that should be testified by that person. Sustained. I think she, he can answer if he can answer, Your Honor. It's a legitimate question. Okay. What, uh, what exception would you have to uh, either hearsay or foundation if we don't have that in yet? Uh, I think it is going to be a uh, an effort to see whether or not this person, based on the information that was given to him from his mother, who is also has some expertise as to whether or not he followed it or why, whether or not he thought it was appropriate. I think that's a legitimate area. Well, I'm, I'm going to still sustain the objection. If a foundation is laid and uh, we can uh, do that, we can always recall. Okay. Uh, when did your uh, uh, mother reach out to you uh, text wise? Uh, so my mother and I have a very strained relationship. Uh, we don't talk very much on a regular basis. And she had mailed me a letter detailing her thoughts and opinions. Um, never did she reach out to me and consult or talk with me about um, my side. The only information that my mother provided was supplied by Leanne to her. Um, and I tried talking with her about what was going on. She would not listen to me. And continue to try to, you know, tell me what she was going to do. Okay, sir, just, just to clarify, you said she wouldn't tell me. I don't, okay, I didn't know if you're talking about defendant or your mother. Yeah, okay. sorry about that, sir. Thank you. Okay, and the uh, letter that was sent to you by your mother expressing her disfavor with what you were doing is an October 8th, 2023 letter, is that correct? Uh, I have no idea, sir. Um, I get a uh, email or a photo of letters that are going to be delivered to my house. Uh, when I saw there was one that was coming from my mom, I just reached out to her uh, through text message and said, hey, what's going on? Why am I receiving this letter? Then she proceeded to, you know, comment on my parenting choices and uh, how I, how she feels, how my mother feels that I should be raising my child. And I uh, returned to send her the letter. So I've never once read the letter. I have no idea what's in it. And it, it's a third party. It's my mom. She really, she doesn't make rules in my home it, and she shouldn't make rules in my home. That's not how this works. Have you uh, encouraged the relationship between Gianna and her grandmother? Yes, I have. I have tried to facilitate that for many years. And, and uh, how often do you provide the child to see uh, her grandmother while the child is in your care? I'm going to object to relevance, Your Honor. But I, think I think it's somewhat some relevance. I'll, I'll, I'll allow him to answer. Okay. 
Can you repeat the question, please? Yes. Uh, how often have you uh, made the child available to see her grandmother while the child was in your care and custody? Anytime my mother has reached out to me, um, I have, if it works with our schedule and if John is available, she's able to see her grandmother. She's able to talk to her grandmother on the phone anytime that she wants. Uh, there's there's no restrictions in I have no restrictions in Gianna having a relationship with my mother or Leanne's mother and father. But like, I think having a familial relationship with all grandparents is beneficial to the child. And I facilitated that on and, uh, when numerous occasions last, with when my mother time? and uh, Leanne's parents as well. Okay. When is the last time that Gianna uh, saw her grandmother when she was in your care, custody, and control? Uh, I believe it would have been. Uh, sometime this summer, uh, I'm going to say around uh, when they came back from Florida. My mom and her husband spend a lot of their time, the retirees, in Florida. So they're not really in Michigan that much, uh, just basically for the summer. I would say sometime around June. And then there were a couple of times where she had reached out, but Gianna was at a basketball game or Gianna was doing something with her friends and you know just wouldn't work out. There were times that I invited my mom to accompany me to Gianna's basketball games. And for her fear of COVID uh, and her husband's fear of COVID, they opted to not come to those games. Yeah. Are, are we talking back in 2020 then? I'm talking about this year, sir. No, this year in 23. So uh, if I suggested you the only time that the uh, that Gianna is able to see her grandmother is when she's in the care, custody, and control of Leanne, you disagree with that factually? Yes, I would say that's a false statement. Okay. Have you seen uh, Gianna have an emotional reaction to the enforcement of the rules in your home? Can you describe an emotional um, reaction? Did she did she cry? Did she uh, feel, uh, show outward appearances of distraught <clears throat> when these uh, punishments, if you will, were inflicted on her based on your rules? Uh, no, there were no tears. Um, I think the emotional response that she had, I, the one that I saw, was a almost a regret or kind of a disappointment, knowing that she had done something wrong. She wasn't able to. She knew she wasn't doing what she was supposed to be doing, and she was being called out on it. Have you observed your wife talking to Gianna when your wife was telling her things that were derogatory toward Leanne? Uh, my wife has never made a derogatory comment to Gianna or about Leanne ever. You uh, were you present when your wife told Gianna that Leanne was a liar? Um, like I said, my wife has never said any derogatory terms about Leanne to Gianna. Whose uh, plan was this? Who uh, instigated this uh, monopoly game uh, uh, program that you have in your home? Uh, first of all, it's not a monopoly game. It is uh, a teaching tool for responsibilities uh, that are tied to uh, physical allowance. Um, you know, there are physical money that is involved in it. Um, and this is a program that myself and my wife came up with to try to teach responsibilities to the two teenagers that are in our home. And uh, the other teenagers in your home is whom and how old? The other teenager in my home is uh, 14 years old, uh, 15 now. He just had a birthday December 2nd. And and his name is Baron. And uh, who are the parents of Baron? Uh, my wife and her ex-husband. Okay. And where are you employed? I am employed at Modular Transportation uh, as a truck driver. And uh, what is your income there? Um, I just saw a pay stub. It was like 78000 as of uh, today, actually. And... Uh, the uh, location that you are currently living, uh, is there anyone else live there besides your wife and the two children we talked about? Nope. Uh, do you own or rent? We own the home. And uh, how long have you been married? Uh, we were married um, just before uh, 2018, uh, December 31st of 2017. Has Gian have you received any reaction from Gianna on the uh, punishments? Uh, to the point that she expressed her disfavor to them, to you? No, she never um, expressed disfavor to them. Uh, I think that she understood, you know, that she had messed up and that she wasn't holding up her end of the bargain. Uh, even after 
the punishment was enacted that night. We sat in the living room and talked as a family, played some family games, April, myself, Gianna, and Baron. Uh, while Gianna was actually doing a load of laundry that she needed for her um, sporting events the next day. How how long has this uh, program of rules been in effect? In your so home? we started the program um, just after their eighth grade year. Uh, so it would have been June. And the kids both were heavily involved in it throughout the summer. Um, we're really excited about learning what their page stubs were and how they worked um, and exchanging money with uh, April and myself as the parent bank so they could pay their bills. Um, and then when school started, uh, just before school started, it kind of slacked off a little bit where I was having to come home from work and say, hey, did you guys get the dishwasher loaded? Hey, is the bathroom done? Hey, you know, did you vacuum the living room? Um, and then they would do those chores and it was fine after I'd said something, but the point was to be able to get them to do these things on their own without having to be asked. Um, then. Okay. My question was when, and I think you answered that and I just need the year you said in June, are you talking about this year? Yes. June of this year. Well, it would have been, yeah, June of this year. It was after their, their, uh, eighth grade year of school. June of 23, correct? Yes, sir. Right. Uh, no further question this time, Your Honor. Okay. Ms. Reed, do you wish to engage in direct at this point or uh, reserve on that? I'll reserve on direct. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Schaefer, next witness. All right. Uh, can you check to see if we have the Janelle uh, Hasselback in the uh, waiting room? And uh, what is the relationship that you have with Gianna? Gianna and my daughter are close friends. Okay. This year, did there come a time that you received information from your daughter concerning Gianna? I did. And did it concern you? It did. And uh, what information did you concern? Not offering for the truth of the matter, Your Honor, just getting to point A to point B. Okay. So just guide me in the right direction. I'll, I'll share the information that I have and received from my daughter. My daughter came home. From... I'm so sorry. Go, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. My daughter came home from school, very concerned about Gianna. She was in tears. She was very upset. She said that she felt that um, Gianna needed to come to our house for the evening because there was a game that was taking place at her house, at her father's house, that was consisted of some type of a Monopoly game, where at, at, at this point, Gianna had lost lights to her bedroom and running water to her bathroom. And Gianna was upset in a conversation with Jaina, my daughter, and another friend that when she went home that evening, that she would not have lights or water. And it could turn into more that she got had an eviction notice, something like a letter on the door, from what I understood, and that it could turn into losing her mattress. Uh, after receiving this information, what did you, first of all, where are you employed? I work for Jackson Public Schools. I've been a teacher for 20 years. Are you a mandatory reporter? I am. Were you uh, concerned with the information you received? I was. And what did you do as a result of receiving that information? I first reached out to Gianna's mother. And did you relate to her uh, that information you had received? I did. And can you recall about when this was that you made contact with uh, Leanne? September 20th, Wednesday evening. What year, ma'am? This year, 2023. And you related that to Leanne, is that correct? I did. Did you relate it to anybody else? I did not. Okay. No further questions, Your Honor. Okay. Ms. Reed, uh, any uh, cross-examination? Yes. Ma'am, have you ever been to my client's home? To Leanne's? To Mr. Hagman's home. It's yes, I have in the past many years ago. When so was the last time you were in his home? It was when our daughters were younger. So I really you, years ago, probably five. Yes. Did you reach out to Mr. Hagman regarding this concerning information? I did not. Did you report anything to CPS? I did not. No further questions. Okay, thank you. Ma'am, I think that's all testimony we need from you then. Uh, thank you. And uh, your excuse, have a good day. Thank you. Next witness, Mr. Schaefer. I have a call. Jenna, to the stand. One second. 
I'm going to object to the minor child testifying, Your Honor. I do not believe it's in the child's best interest to be forced to testify against either parent. And the court has interfered with this child and to gauge her reasonable preference. Okay. Mr. Schaefer, what's your, your honor? The, uh, my response is that the interview uh, is for a preference only. Uh, the factual situation is what happened in a home. And uh, the only direct evidence other than hearsay evidence would be from the child as to the perspective we've heard on cross-examination, uh, the father's rendition, certainly this is a 14 year old and I think has the uh, maturity to uh, address what went on in that particular home. Okay. Ms. Reed, uh, why should the court not take uh, the direct testimony then from the child as to that uh, particular issue? Well, the other issue, well, there, there's, I don't believe it's appropriate for the child to be testifying against either parent. And this child has repeatedly requested to both parties not to be put in the middle of parenting time disputes. And that's exactly what this is doing. Well, and she, also, she can request that, but I'm asking you what's your objection to allowing her to testify? I don't believe it's an uh, appropriate. I believe it would be a detriment to her. Well, I guess I can't uh, second guess the uh, parents if they wish to do that and put her in that position. Um, that's unfortunate. I'll tell you that it's never good to have a child testify, but as Mr. Schaefer states, there's no, there's no other testimony he can get other than uh, from Gianna herself. So without anything more, as far as objection, I'm going to have to allow her to testify. Obviously, I guess, Mr. Schaefer, just to clarify, because the court has discussed the issue of preference with her, that you not go into that? Uh, I don't intend to, Your Honor. Okay. And uh, is Gianna on uh, at this point? Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Schaefer. Good, mo good morning, Jenna. How are you doing? Good. Okay. And uh, where are you located right now? Uh, my mom's friend David's house. Okay. And uh, where do you go to school? High school. And what grade are you in? Ninth. And how old are you at present time? Fourteen. And you have a... Uh, split custody relationship with your parents. Is that correct? Yeah. A uh, couple of days you're with uh, one parent and a couple of days you're with the other parent. Is that correct? Something along those lines? Mm -hmm. Is that yes? Yes. Okay. Um, did there come a time in your father's home when certain rules were set forth on some sort of monopoly game uh, that you had to adhere to? Yeah. And what what is your recollection as to when that started? Uh, June. Of this year? Yes. And could you basically tell the court what that Monopoly game uh, was? What are the rules? We do chores to get fake money to pay bills. And if we don't pay the bills, then we don't get to use whatever the bills were for. And did there come a time after June that certain things were taken from you in your dad's home? Yeah. Could you tell the judge, uh, first of all, were, were any light bulbs or electricity in your room taken? Yeah. And could you tell us about that? What was taken from your room? Uh, light bulbs and then like our computers remotes for our TVs, our phones. And as a result of that, were you able to uh, do your homework? I did it, yeah. Okay. Was it more difficult? Yeah. And uh, what was your understanding why the light bulbs were taken from your room? We didn't pay our electricity bill because we weren't doing our chores and we didn't get money to pay for them. And uh, did there come a time when you received an eviction notice from your room? Yes. And approximately when was that? Sometime in September. Okay. And do you know why that eviction notice was put on your door? Because we didn't pay our bills, our rent. Did there come a time when your access to various showers and water was restricted because of these rules yeah we had to use the smaller bathroom 
And what what bathroom were you not allowed to use? The main one that we usually use. And uh, uh, was is the one that you had access to uh, a lesser bathroom? What's the difference? The small the shower is much smaller and more difficult to use, I'd say. And then it's just a smaller space. Good. And um, as a result of this, these rules, were there times that you were restricted on what foods you could eat in the home? We had to ask to get certain, like, to get food from the pantry. And were, were you restricted as what you could use based on the rules? Yeah. And... Um, your electronics, are you able to use the phone that your mother had purchased for you while you were at your father's home? No. And do you know why? Because they think that my mom could be listening in through my phone. Objection, speculation. Well, I, I think if she, if she knows the reason why, I think she can testify to it, Your Honor. Well, if she knows. Do, do you know why you can't use it in your father's home? Because they've said that they think that my mom could be listening in through my phone or texting me, trying to like get me to think. You went on vacation my... for a week or so or 10 days with your dad to Florida, did you not? Yes. Were you allowed to use your phone to contact your mother during that time period? Not my phone, no. And was that the same reason that that you gave us before as to why you couldn't use it? I believe so. Okay. In your father's home, are there derogatory remarks made toward your mother in your presence? Yeah. And uh, is she demeaned in front of you by either your father or your stepmother? I'd say so. These rules and the, it, was this a change from what was going on prior to June of 23? Yeah. And uh, how has that made you feel and your ability to complete your academics? I'd say it's just a little bit more difficult because I have more stuff to do, but yeah. Okay. And, uh, you, what kind of student have you been uh, in the past? Straight A. And uh, recently you have uh, failed a uh, test, have you not? Yeah. And uh, have you received lower grades since these rules have been in effect? Yeah, I have two Bs right now. And uh, are you involved in sports? Yes. And what sports are you involved in? Volleyball and basketball. And uh, have you been able to attend all of the uh, camps and preparatory sessions when you were with your dad? Most of them, not all. And do uh, you know why you haven't been able to attend all of those? Because they're busy and aren't able to take me. Okay. Uh, has your mother taken you to your camps and and uh, practices when you're with her? Yeah. Has your mother encouraged your relationship with your father? Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. Um. Is it your understanding you can see your father whenever you want to, if that's requested? Yeah. Do you believe that the current situation in your father's home is, is not healthy for you emotionally? I'd say so. Okay. You love your dad, is that correct? Yeah. You love your mother? Yes. 
How would you describe your relationship with your mother? Close. No further questions, Your Honor. Thank you. Well, thank you. Ms. Reed, any uh, cross? Yes, Your Honor. Um, Gianna, you testified that you did your homework on your iPad when the light bulbs were taken out and it was more difficult. Is that right? Yeah. Could you have done your homework in the living room at the kitchen table? I could have. But you wanted to do it in your room? Mm -hmm. Yes. And then you have light strips around your room that are kind of glued to the walls. Is that correct? Yeah. And those were still in your room? They were, but I wasn't allowed to use them. But you could have done your homework elsewhere, right? I could have. What else did you do that evening when you were doing your homework and after your dad had taken the light bulbs? I'm not sure. Okay. Um, how is this one incident where the light bulbs were removed or has this happened multiple times? Just once. And how long were the lights removed for? When I got home and then I think there was one more day, maybe the day after we got them back or I'm not sure. Okay. And how, how long were you not allowed to use the big bathroom? The same amount of time. Okay. And you had said you were restricted on what you could use in the pantry. What were you restricted on? I had to ask to get food from the pantry. Did dad say no? I never asked. Okay. Have you ever been forced to eat a meal that was different than anybody, everybody else in the family? Probably. When was that? Well, we had to have potato soup that night, but yeah. Everyone had potato soup that night? Just me and Baron. And that was just what dinner was? Yeah. Um, but um, are you designed your necessities of life? Can you say that again? So I'm going to rephrase the question. When you're over at Dad's, do you have access to food? Yes. Do you have access to water? Yeah. Has he ever taken water away from you? No. Do you have your clothes? Yes. Do you have your room? Yeah. Do you have bed? Mm-hmm. You can do yes. your laundry? Yeah. Um, do you have access to school supplies? Yes. Have those ever been taken away? No. And you have a phone? Yes. Are you able to use dad's phone to call anyone you want if your phone's not working? Yeah. Okay. Um, is the heat on? Yes. And the lights are on other than this one time they were taken out of your room? Yes. Bathrooms are working? Yes. You have furniture in your room? Yeah. You like your room? Yeah. You keep it clean? Not really. What does dad think about that? He doesn't like it. How often do you clean your room? Not very. Okay. Since this um, incident where we had um, the chores weren't being done and light bulbs were taken away, have you guys kept on your chores? I'd like to think so. What kind of chores are you required to do? We have to clean the main bathroom, the kitchen, do like the dishwasher, take out the trash, the basement, the living room, the little bathroom. Yeah. And do you share these chores with Baron? Yeah, we switch every week. Okay. And are these chores everyday chores or are they once a week chores? Once a week chores. Okay. Well, the dishwasher is like everyday chore. Okay. Are you currently in counseling? Yes. How's that going? Fine. Okay. And are you in person or doing over camera, like remote Zoom counseling? Zoom. Okay. And how often have you been there? Uh, a few times. Did you talk to dad about getting into counseling? I told him that I wanted to. Okay. Did you talk to mom about counseling? Yes. Okay. And then did you talk to mom about the Jackson Healing Clinic? No. Did 
you've never talked to mom about the Jackson Healing Clinic? I think so. Um, and you and mom communicate over Snapchat? Yes. Um, do you recall sending a message to mom that said, I haven't gone yet. That's why dad told them to reach out to you for say before I went. I'm not sure. Would me showing you the message help refresh your memory? Sure. Did I break it? Is that it? I guess that should be it. Can everyone see what I'm showing or sharing? I can. Gianna, can you see that? Yeah. Your message is at the bottom. Is this a, t or a Snapchat message between you and your mom? Yeah. And up at the top, it said, mom says, or towards the middle, it says, he just texted me and someone said someone was reaching out to me. He and April tried to leave me out of it again. You are not to go until some, it's someone your dad and I work together on and agree to. I had texted him a couple of months ago asking him to work with me and help find you one, and he never responded. And you responded with, I haven't gone yet, and that's why my dad told them to reach out to you for a say before. Okay. Okay. Do you remember that conversation? Not really, but yeah. Okay. And are you comfortable with your current counselor? Yeah. Okay. Would you want to change counselors? Possibly. Okay. Have you talked to mom or dad about changing counselors? Yes. Okay. Wait, Mr. Schaefer dropped out of his back on board. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Let me look at my notes for one moment. What classes are you getting B's in? Biology and English 9, AP prep. So it's an AP class? Yes. And are you enjoying the sports that you're in? Yes. Are there any other extracurricular activities that you participate in? Band. Okay. Are you doing any other activities other than band? I don't think so. I have no further questions. Okay, thank you. Uh, Jan, I'm going to ask you a few, and then I'll turn it back over to Mr. Schaefer. Uh, when did you start band? Sixth grade. Okay, so you've been doing it for a period of time. Yeah. And you're getting B's in biology and English, I think English 9, you said, which is an AP course. Uh, why do you think you're getting B's now instead of the A's? Are those classes harder than they used to be? I'd say so. I think there was a testified to by uh, someone in a, by uh, Oh, I guess it was by you. I'm like, that you had failed a test. Is that correct? Yeah. And what was what was that test that you failed? Uh, in which class it did? English. Okay. And why why did you fail that? Maybe I didn't study enough. I thought I understood it. Okay. And uh, at the time that uh, you were preparing for that test. Would the same uh, parenting time arrangement happen? You were with mom for two or three days or dad for two or three days. So you'd have been with both of your parents when you could have uh, studied, correct? Yeah. Okay. And when did you, when was it, when was it that, that you failed that test? Um. Maybe about a month and a half ago. So we're talking maybe early early November or late October. Uh, well, probably November if it's a month and a half. Maybe. I think I counted wrong. I think it was sometime in October. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> you did state uh, as as related to phone that you can't use the phone your mother provided. But you do have access to a phone through your father, is that correct? Yeah. 
And with that phone, have you uh, have you called your mother on that phone before or text her or communicated with her in any other way? Yeah. Okay. I don't have anything further. Mr. Schaefer, any uh, redirect? Yes, thank you. Uh, you had talked about uh, a night that you and Baron had to eat potato soup. Uh, was that a result of some sort of punishment under the rules? I think so. What did everybody else eat? I'm not sure. Okay. Um, did you make complaint to your father or stepmother at that point in time? I told my dad that I didn't like the system. Okay. So you've complained to him. That, have you complained to him more than one time that you don't like the system? I believe so. Uh, has he relented in the system at all? No. You were asked by the judge about uh, this phone that your father has. Is it a phone that is given to you, or is it one you have to ask permission of your father to use? It was one that was given to me. Okay. Do you believe that the stress that you may be having under this system is affecting your schoolwork? Yeah. Would you like not to have that stress with the system? Yeah. No further questions, Your Honor. Thank you. Ms. Reed, anything else? No, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you, Gianna. That's all we need from you. And uh, so your excuse, you have a good day. Thank you. You too. Your Honor, I have one witness left, and I have her scheduled for 1.15 just because of her schedule and the anticipation of when she would be available. I would, I have no objection if witnesses are taken out of order, but that's the last witness I would have. Okay. Ms. Reed, what are your thoughts on that? Do you have any problem with uh, taking this particular witness out of order? That's fine. Who is the witness? Uh, the witness is Carol Masternak. Okay, okay, thanks. Okay, um, Ms. Reed, do you wish to proceed with your proofs at this point? Yes, and I'd like to call my client. Okay. Mr. Hageman, you're still under oath. You understand that? Yes, sir, I do. Okay, go ahead, Ms. Reed. Okay, James, we've talked a lot about this chore system. Can you explain to us exactly what the system is? Yeah, so it's a system that my wife and I came up with, um, like I said earlier, to teach responsibility to uh, both the teenagers in our home. Um, it's a two-week system um, where the children are responsible to help clean up the kitchen, uh, load and unload the dishwasher, wipe the counters down, nothing too extravagant, um, clean, the, clean the bathrooms once a week. Like we stated, there's two bathrooms um, that they're responsible to clean once a week, um, run the vacuum in the living room, and then run the vacuum in the basement, uh, picking up, you know, odds and end things that just accumulate in those rooms here and there. You know, if they had had, uh, they go downstairs to use the TV and I think there's a PlayStation down there, you know, make sure they bring their pop bottle or their bottle of water back up with them. Just general keeping tidy things. Um, and then during the summertime, there were outdoor chores. Um, I don't think either one of the kids really did a bunch of the outdoor chores, but I had asked them to, you know, maybe mow the yard or help pick up sticks that fall, just pretty basic stuff. Um, like I said, uh, one week, I think it was oh, oh, and then they were also responsible for doing their laundry um, and then keeping their rooms tidy. Uh, and the chores switched. So one week, Baron would be responsible for loading on the dishwasher. The other week, Gianna would be responsible for loading on the dishwasher. One week, Gianna would clean the living room and Baron would do the basement and then vice versa. Same thing with the bathrooms. You know, one week, one kid would do the bathroom in the hallway and the other kid would do the bathroom in off of the kitchen. Um yeah, I mean, that's, that's big. Oh, and also, you know, feed and water the dog and take the dog for a walk. Uh, those were included. Um, like I said, just re real basic, you know, necessities and things that everybody should do. Okay, and then what is the system in place if they do their chores? So if they do their chores, uh, my wife and I came up with this system um, where we uh, pay them a weekly wage as if they were to have a job. Uh, we supply them with paychecks that uh, we take the time and effort to break down uh 
pretty intricately with um, taxes and Social Security, FICA, everything that would be taken out of anyone's paycheck uh, to try to help them learn and explain, you know, what taxes are, how taxes work, uh, what to expect. So when a kid, you know, when the children get jobs, you know, if Gianna gets a summer job and she's making, you know, minimum wage, $10 an hour, you know, she doesn't expect, hey, I work $10, I should get $100. She won't be shocked when she gets less than that, which a lot of kids are. Uh, and with their weekly paychecks, they received um, money in an envelope, and they were also received bills. They received bills for Netflix. They received bills for electricity. They received phone bills. They received internet bills. There was rent that was included in this. And it was all intricately put together. So the amount of money that they had to use to pay these bills on a weekly basis and the, the times and the dates the bills were due, they would, one, have enough money to pay the bills just like if they were in life, you know, you have to make sure and budget your bills and budgeting and learn, you know, Hey, I don't have money for this this week. Uh, and then at the end of the month, they would have an excess of $40 and that $40 would actually be actual physical cash that we would give them. They have these green light debit savings accounts. Um, it's all online. They have access to them and they actually have cards. And then we put the money on there specifically earmarking a portion of it that needs to be to savings. And then a portion of it that would be to, spend. So if Gianna, now that she's a little bit older, she wants to go to volleyball games and basketball games at the high school, hang out with friends. She doesn't always specifically have to ask me for money for that. Or I know there was time just recently uh, with her team, they were traveling uh, for school and the bus stopped at a Chick-fil-A and, you know, she was able to use her green light card to purchase her meal. Uh, you know, just stuff like that. That maybe, you know, she has access to money that when parents aren't around. And are there any restrictions on that money? Uh, the only restriction is that uh, half of the money um, that we pay on a legal basis is earmarked into a savings account. And she has to ask um, if that mo the savings money um, can be used for other things. Like we would have to go into the app and free it up. But the other half, there's no restrictions. Uh, I know Gianna's purchased some things online through like video games, Fortnite. She's purchased like skins and stuff like that. Um, I think she's used it, like I said, for snacks here and there. So just, you know, basic stuff. Okay, you said this this all this entire system is to teach responsibility and budgeting and life skills. Yep. Um, you know, I, I think it's a I know it's a good system. Uh, you know, everybody in life typically has stumbles and mess, messes up. And I thought and think that it's a great thing to be able to teach these skills to Gianna to where if there is a misstep, she doesn't have to worry about, you know, actually not having electricity or actually not being able to pay her bills in some way. So she can learn to budget and learn to, you know life skills. I mean, every, everybody has them and it's a way to kind of baby step into that process to where she just won't get thrown into it. Um, you know, when she leaves the home. Okay. And have there, other than the one incident where, or one occurrence where the chores weren't being done and the light bulbs were taken and they had to use the smaller bathroom, were there any other consequences or punishments that were implemented? Uh, there were no uh, consequences, but um, probably about a month before the light bulbs and the bathroom, I had talked with both of the children, Gianna and Baron, and said that I needed to have a, they needed to go through their chore chart and write down which days they were going to be doing the chores because they were on a weekly basis and the chores weren't getting done on a weekly basis. And the excuse from both the kids is like, well, I don't know which day I'm supposed to do it. So it was kind of an excuse that they wouldn't do it. But I sat them down and I said, listen, you need to tell me and write down so you know and I know what day of the week, when it's your week to clean the bathroom, what day are you going to do that? So there's a system of checks and balances. So I come home from work on a Tuesday and I say it was Baron's day to clean the bathroom. The bathroom wasn't cleaned. I could say, hey, you said you were supposed to do this. You didn't do it. Why not? But other than that, no, the only time was the uh, light bulbs and then they had to use the other bathroom. Was she ever or any of the children ever denied electricity? No. Were they denied water? No. Um, were they denied the necessities of life? No, there was never a denial of the necessities of life. Okay. Gianna said on the, that day they were, you made them eat potato soup. Was that, was that a specific part of the punishment? No, I think I had prepared potato soup like the day before. Uh, and typically when I, I have a problem with my cooking, when I cook, I make a lot. Um, so I'm sure that it was left over from the day before and we reheated it and I think we all ate the potato soup just to try to use, you know, the, I'll say the resources and stuff that we have in the home. Okay. But it wasn't part of a punishment. No, there's, there's never been a restriction on what food she can eat or she has to eat some sort of food as a punishment. That's, that's never happened. And that would never happen. Okay. 
Um, was it ever threatened that her mattress was going to be taken away? No, as I stated earlier, um, that was not threatened. I was trying to equate a situation that, you know, if there was a rent to center type of thing, I'm saying that, you know, they could come take stuff like that. But no, I've never, I never threatened to take her mattress. Okay. And there was testimony about an issue with mom not being able to call Gianna when you guys went on vacation in about February of last year. What happened with the phone issue? Uh, I had asked Gianna to leave the phone that her mom um, supplied to her at home uh, for specific reasons. Uh, and Gianna was able to use my phone. She texted her mom a couple times. Her mom did not respond back at all to some of the text messages. Um, and then when we were actually at the theme park, this was a trip that we had went to Disney and Universal. Um, it was a quite expensive trip. And we were at the park and Gianna had asked to call her mom. And I said, sure. So we kind of taken a break and Gianna was, had, you know, kind of separated herself a little bit from us so she could have some privacy with her mom and was talking. And I want to, I want to say it was definitely more than a 15 minute conversation, if not closer to 30. And I did ask Gianna, I was like, Hey, you know, we're at the park, we're here on our vacation. Let's kind of wrap this phone call up so we can get back to enjoying our family time. Okay. Are there any restrictions placed on when Gianna can call or talk to her mom? No, I've never placed a restriction on that. Um, I actually, when I purchased the phone for Gianna, I I don't know if it was me or Gianna that supplied uh, her mom with the, her phone information, but she was able to get that information the very first day that Gianna had a phone. So, you know, and I've never restricted who Gianna can talk to or when they can talk to. Never, never been a need for it. Okay. Does Gianna come to you for guidance? Uh, yeah, I'd like to think Gianna comes to me, uh, asks me questions, um, you know, uh, uh, situations that she has with friends or you know uh recently there was um somebody in leanne's family had passed away and gianna was apprehensive about going to this funeral and, and brought it up to me and shared some concerns with me about it and i let gianna know that i would reach out to her mom but you know whatever her mom decided would, would be her decision one it would be on her time and i don't want to get into a situation where i'm restricting what can be done at leanne's home i don't think that's my place um but yeah gianna reached out to me about it i reached out to leanne uh it didn't go well uh, I think Leanne kind of responded, you know, aggressively towards me, and and I, and I left it at that. And I told John I tried. Um, other than that, you know, I said I can't specifically say a, you know, this event or that event happened, but John talks to me on a real regular basis. I mean, daily. And I'll ask her how her day's going. She'll tell me and talk about, you know, what her friends said or her and her friend got in like a little, not an argument, but they like play wrestling stuff or like I, yeah. She just talks to me all the time about everyday things. Okay. And can you describe your relationship with Gianna? Oh, man, I think we have a great relationship with Gianna. I'm super close. Um, we always, you know, we're affectionate. I give her hugs and kisses and stuff like that. You know, not all the time, but, you know, like a good night hug and kiss. We kind of do like uh, we have these little handshake games. Uh, you know, we do like high fives and different things. Um, Gianna picks on me all the time. Like, you know, I'm her dad and I do a lot of goofy stuff. She, you know, makes fun of my dad jokes. She tries to do a dad joke here and there every once in a while with me. I will say that I'm a lot funnier than her, but. Yeah, we have a pretty good relationship. Okay. Other than removing electronics and restricting maybe the, the you can't use the big bathroom if you don't clean the big bathroom, how else do you discipline John? Uh, I mean, other than that, I mean, I'll take a cell phone away here and there. Um, that's really about it. I, I, I can't think of a time I've ever grounded her, um, you know, where she wasn't able to go do something that she wanted to do. Like I said, it's, it's mainly a cell phone. I think with kids these days, like that's like one of the most meaningful punishments. Like it's what they attach to unless they realize like, Hey, you know, I need to, I've done something wrong. I need to get my phone back. But yeah, there's been no groundings or there's no spankings or anything like that. Okay. Do you have any religious beliefs or practices? Uh, no, we don't go to church. Um, a few years ago, we kind of started to go to church. We went on a couple weekends. Um, didn't seem like it was received very well. Um, and like I said, you know, like Leanne said, you know, Gianna just recently started going to this uh, youth group. I think it's more to kind of hang out with friends and get outside of the house as opposed to like actually a religious belief. But she was telling me how she had downloaded a, a Bible thing. And I said, hey, you know, kid, I was in church a lot growing up. I was raised Lutheran. Uh, I was in the youth group, went to church every Sunday. You know, if she had any questions about the Bible or the church, you know, told her to talk to me about it and definitely supported her and her wanting to go to these uh, these events. Okay. Do you purchase the items that she wants and needs? Uh, yes. I don't purchase everything that she wants. I mean, I don't think it's, you know, the way to raise a kid to get everything that they specifically want, but definitely everything that she needs. 
Who arranges and takes Gianna to doctors and dentist appointments? Um, I do for doctors. Uh, Gianna has a dentist in Albion. Um, it used to be uh, Lane Stumpos. I believe that that dentist office has been sold. I typically don't have any contact with the dentist. Um, they have reached out to me a couple times about some billing matters, uh, but those are scheduled by Leanne. But um, doctor, uh, other doctor visits are are on me. Okay. Does Gianna have any special needs, like medical educational needs? Um, no, uh, she was diagnosed with asthma as a child, like childhood asthma, and she did have an inhaler. She, I don't think she's used it in a couple of years. There hasn't really been any issues with it. So we've kind of, I kind of get the feeling she's grown out of it, but other than that, no. Okay. And you live in a house, is that correct? Yes. Um, how long, sorry, how long have you lived there? Uh, just over five years. And how many bedrooms? Uh, so it's a three bedroom home. And we've talked a lot about chores, but can you describe your housekeeping standards? Um, yeah, so I would describe our housekeeping standards as, um, I guess, basic. I mean, you know, we run the vacuum. Um, we don't dust every day or every week, but, you know, periodically and we pick things up. Just like to keep things tidy. Okay, other than the chore list, are there any other house rules that Jayana has to follow? I mean... You know, being respectful to each other, like, you know, her and Baron can't get in arguments or she can't, you know, talk back to me or April. Um, but no. What's Gianna's relationship like with Baron? Oh, they have a great relationship, uh, like a brother and sister type relationship. You know, they joke around and they they pick on each other. And uh, I think it's very reminiscent of the relationship I have with my sister growing up. You know, it's where they I, I love my sister and I, I think that Baron and Gianna love each other. But, you know, they are also siblings and there is also going to be like that sibling rivalry. I mean, they have a great, great competition with each other they always like are wanting to play well, they used to play a lot of basketball together like one-on-one -on -one and stuff like that out in the driveway um lately they've been playing like video games together uh because baron is really good at a video game and gianna's been inviting him along to play with her and her friends so it kind of like bumps her status up so okay um have you ever been the subject of a cps investigation no i have not okay do you know if april has been the subject of cps investigation she has not okay any convictions for misdemeanors or felonies? Uh, I had DUIs. I uh, had two DUIs in like when I was like 21 and 23, so quite a while ago. Nothing since then? Nothing since then. Any personal protection orders against you? No. Are there any physical issues that affect your ability as a parent? No. Are there any mental health issues that affect your ability as a parent? No, there are not. And what is Gianna's attendance like at school? Uh... When Gianna's with me, she is, she goes to school on time every day, uh, barring like a sickness or illness. She's uh, at school all the time. Okay. And Gianna's, if I have the list right, Gianna's participating in basketball, volleyball, and band. Are there any other extracurricular uh, yeah, shows? She recently started um, assisting with student government as well. Okay. She's a busy little girl. Yes, she is. There's a lot on her plate. And then especially with... The AP classes, um, you know, she did express to me not too long ago that maybe next year she wouldn't sign up for an AP class because it it's a lot on her plate to to keep up with the grades that she wants to keep up with, but then also be able to do the extracurricular activities that she wants to do. And what's your involvement with, with all the activities? Uh, you know, go to games, support her, you know, when I can. There's a lot of times, especially with the teams that she's been on, they'll have games that start at four o'clock that may be an hour drive away. And by the time I get home from work, I don't have time to shower and get there. So I have missed some games. But I go to the games that I can. I support her when I can. Uh, both myself and April have packed um, lunches and stuff like that for the kids to take on the buses uh, to these games. Uh, I know at volleyball, we, we spent some time shopping and putting together shopping lists to provide lunches for the kids in their um, all-day volleyball tournaments. Actually, all of Gianna, well, most of Gianna's friends enjoy pickles. So we go to Gordon's Food Service and we buy like one of those big jars of pickles to make sure that all the girls can have you know, a, a big pickle that they want to have. And for the ones that don't like pickles, we provide like uh, apples and oranges and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, we're, we're pretty involved um, as much as we can. It is, it does get kind of hard sometimes. I think there's been an effort by um, some people, like we kind of get dirty looks and stuff when we walk into games or feelings that, you know, people kind of make it just feel like we're out of place, but we try our best to not let that affect us and support Gianna as best we can. Um, do you help her with her homework? Yeah, uh, both myself and April helped her with her homework. Uh, April's helped her a lot. I can't remember exactly what the name of it was, but it's an English project where it's kind of like a fill in the blank type of thing from what I kind of took it as. I didn't help with that so much. Um, I'll be honest, my spelling and use of the English language is atrocious. Um, but I do help Gianna with math and stuff like that. Uh, I know 
she had a problem with common core math. And this was you know, a couple of years ago. And I had to sit down and explain to Gianna that um, even though your teacher is wanting you to use common core, and I think you should try your best to learn it, but if you know how to do long division and subtraction and addition and stuff like that, ultimately your math teacher isn't going to care how you got the correct answer. As long as you're showing your work and how you got there, that will be acceptable. Okay. And are you helping her with her AP prep in biology? Um. I would. Gianna's never asked me for help in biology. Um, I've talked to her, you know, recently about you know, when I got her grades, uh, the progress report. I talked to her, I said, I noticed that they were slipping a little bit. And that's when she said that she really felt like there was a lot on her plate with the AP classes and all of the extracurricular activities. Right, I guess we're getting into hearsay at this point in time, so I'm going to object. Now, yeah, court will sustain. Uh, you can't get into what somebody else said. So, Okay. You guys have a complicated parenting time schedule. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, it's very frustrating. Um, anytime that either myself or Leanne wants to have a vacation, we need to communicate with the other parent about trying to switch a day. Cause there's really not any time that's more than a day or two where we can take a vacation. So there's like no long weekends there, unless it's backed up to a, a holiday that would be theirs. But for the most part, no, it's, it's always been an issue with vacation. I mean, specifically right now. So today is a switch day for us. I have to pick Gianna up from school. Well, she's not in school today. She's here. But after this, I would pick Gianna up. Then she would be in my home until 10 o'clock um, on the 23rd or 9 o'clock on the 20, 23rd. Then she would go back to her mom until 9 o'clock. And then she would come back to me. And then she would go back to her mom. It's just, it's a lot, a lot of back and forth. Um, a lot of back and forth. Okay. And I do believe the defendant had asserted that she's always open and willing to exchange days or give you extra parenting time, but you're not willing to do the same. Is that true? No. Um, and I've supplied lots of you know, my text messages and stuff. Um, anytime that Leanne has asked, I have said, Hey, I hope Jana has a good time. Uh, yeah, sure. We can, we can switch a day here and there. Let's get it figured out. And as the years had progressed, when I started trying to use these days that had been switched, um, there's always an issue, you know, there's something we come up with Leanne and her family of, oh, well, we already had this plan, so you can't do it. Or so-and-so is coming in from out of town, so we can't really switch that day. Um, and, you know, recently with that Disney trip, um, Leanne had taken Gianna, uh, two separate years for spring break, um, kind of a last minute notification to me, like, Hey, I'm gonna take Gianna for spring break. We're going to be gone for a week. Um, you know, just a heads up type of thing. I was okay with that thinking that it would be a two-way street. And when I was, requesting time uh, for a family vacation. It was very, very difficult to, and quite frankly, through Leanne's own admission, she never agreed to it. Uh, there's messages saying, why we're on our trip to me. She said, I've never agreed to this trip. And there's no time built into your current parenting time schedule to allow week long trips. No, uh, the schedule is the schedule. Um, the only thing that's built into it is holidays. And it says that those supersede the normal parenting time, but no, there is no other uh, option for a uninterrupted parenting time longer than what's the, you know, two days here, three days there, two days here, three day there schedule. And do you believe that this schedule is in the best interest of Gianna? The current one? No, I don't. Um, Gianna's expressed to me numerous times that she does not like the amount of switching, um, how it's only. Gianna, again, days. we're into hearsay at this point in time. I, okay. understand. I understand. Sorry. Uh, yes. I do not think that this schedule is beneficial to Gianna. Um, the amount of switching that happens on a two week basis is, is a lot with a lot of the back and forth and there's not quality time really at either parent's house. About how many times do you guys have to switch in a two week period? So in a two week period, there would be, um, a Tuesday, a Friday, a Sunday and a Friday. So in two weeks we switch four times, I believe. Okay. And if the parenting time schedule were modified, what would you modify it to? I think ideally I wouldn't, I know, I think I know a week on week off parenting time would be beneficial. Um, it would give both Leanne and myself to be able to plan time accordingly where we don't have to communicate with each other about our schedules or, you know, plan trips or vacations. We'll know specifically when we'll have Gianna, how long we'll have Gianna for without having to get permission. Um, and if we were to do that switching on like a Wednesday, then that would alleviate long weekends. I know Leanne had purchased a camper recently and a lot of her trips are camping trips in the summertime where she wants to have a long weekend. So, you know, she could take a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then still have Gianna be home to help unpack the camper and 
you know, do things. Or I know there's been times when we've, I've taken Gianna on trips and we have to leave early from where we're at to make sure we're back to the switch time at five o'clock. And Gianna's not able to help unpack the truck or help pack the truck or out, unpack her clothes or anything like that, because, you know, we have to drop her off right after the trip is over. Like she doesn't even get to come back to the house to change or shower or do anything she wants. Okay. And I believe it's been testified by both of you that you have communication issues. Is that correct? That is correct. Yes. Have you guys participated in counseling regarding your communication issues? Uh, yes. Specifically before the Disney trip, um, both Leanne and myself met with Gianna's first counselor, uh, Miss Patricia, um, trying to work out a agreement to where Gianna would be allowed to come on this the Disney trip, and uh, it ended up being like a it was like a two two and a half hour process, and there was really nothing that was done. Uh, there was a lot of accusations. Um, you know, I think a lot of them were directed at me, and I just really tried to I tried to keep my communication with Leanne to scheduling matters with Gianna. If we're talking an early pickup or we're talking a drop off um, or just a regular pickup or drop off. Uh, other than that, I don't really think there needs to be a lot of communication between Leanne and myself. Okay. And when you talk about the Disney trip, when was the Disney trip? Uh, it was President's Day weekend and that was in 22. Okay. And have you guys had any disagreements about major decisions regarding Gianna? Uh, I don't believe there's been any major disagreements. Uh, I know Gianna's... Um, Counseling, like I said, uh, I've talked to counselors. Um, Gianna's first counselor, Miss Patricia. I messaged Leanne and I both talked, and Leanne asked about getting Gianna a counselor. I agreed. I thought it was a good idea. I reached out. I found a counselor. They said that they would reach out to her. Apparently, they didn't. I don't know, you know, what their practices are. After and Gianna was already in counseling, um, and then Miss Patricia had to leave or had accepted a different job and couldn't take any of her patients with her. So we, Gianna wasn't in counseling for an amount of time, about a year. And in that time, um, expressed about wanting to be in counseling again. That's when I looked up the healing clinic, uh, Jackson Healing Clinic. I talked to them and kind of expressed that, you know, there are communication issues with Leanne and myself. And if they could reach out to her and, you know, then there wouldn't be any, you know, hey, if she had questions, she could speak directly to the person with the answers. And I wouldn't need to be a middleman. Uh, and when I let Leanne know that, um, she immediately attacked me and was talking, uh, saying, you know, telling me I better do this and I better do that. And it was a very aggressive manner. Uh, and I was just trying to say, hey, talk to them, see what they have to say, see if it's something that's going to work. And have you guys, after this process has started, there's been no communication regarding counseling? No, there's no. Okay. Do you make the disparaging comments in front of Jana about Leanne? No, I don't. As a matter of fact, both April and myself have, you know, kind of gone out of our way telling Gianna that, you know, we don't have a problem with her mom. And we went, we wish the best for her and hope that she does great in life. Like, we do not make disparaging comments about her. And are you willing to facilitate a close relationship between Gianna and her mom? Yes, uh, I have. And I will continue to do that both with her mom and her grandparents. Are there any sort of instances of domestic violence between you and Leanne? No, there are not. Okay. I have no further questions. Okay. Ms. Aker, I assume that you probably have some uh, recross, I would assume. I do. Uh, I do. Why, why don't we do this? Why don't we take a brief? Uh, and then at that point, Ms. Reed, how many witnesses do you have? I just have April. Okay. Okay. Why don't we take a brief 10-minute uh, 